Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how to change a wheel cylinder on drum brakes. This is for a Mazda or a Ford, but the whole concept will work for pretty much any manufacturer. And I'm going to do both sides, but I'll show you one side. For this truck, you're just going to need a couple of ratchets, open end wrenches, and that's it. So there's a 10 millimeter for the bleeder valve, um, a 7 16 for where the brake line goes into the wheel cylinder and then the two bolts that go onto the wheel cylinder and hold it in is half inch. So I'm going to just start with looking at the wheel cylinder and just showing you that. And that's right back here and also behind this right there. So the first step is to use some liquid wrench or, or whatever you're going to use and spray the penetrating oil all over that you might want to do that the day before, let it soak, and that'll make that nice and easy to get off. You're going to take this bolt and that bolt off, and then this bolt that's connected to the brake line is going to come off, and this will come out. If you want to see how to get to this point, and it's taken off the, the brake shoes and all the springs and everything, you could click on the video that's right above my finger. It'll take you to how to change the drum brakes on a car, and it'll show you how to get all the springs and stuff off and so I just took everything off now we're just going to take the wheel cylinder off and what the wheel cylinder does is it pushes these out so that it pushes the brake shoes against the drum so now we're going to change this very simple very easy to do no reason to spend a lot of money on this so here's your nice new brake cylinder you see it fits in just like that it's going to look a lot nicer than that and it's also going to function correctly and not bleed brake fluid out of the sides how you tell that these are bad is one you have spongy brakes so your brakes are spongy because you get air in them and the air gets in through this spot over here your brakes are hydraulic so any air you're going to feel that when it compresses you're going to feel that compression of air instead of compression of liquid and fluid doesn't compress so you'll look here and you can see there's a bunch of brake fluid up here that's coming out over here can't do this lefty there we go so you can see that's all shot in there so this is gonna have to be replaced save these because they're gonna be reused so here's a back view of your wheel cylinder there's the bleeder valve there's where the brake line goes in there's the two bolts that hold in the brake cylinder first step is gonna be to take your 7 16 wrench and try to crack this bolt here and this is the brake line feeding the bleeder valve okay good let's make sure this spins so you want to make sure this spins if it spins and your brake line is rusted to it and it's spinning too don't do this yet undo the uh, two bolts here pull out the wheel cylinder and then spin the wheel cylinder instead but I'm not having that problem this is just this is good so I'm gonna just put a bag here so that the brake fluid doesn't get everywhere and it'll drip down into a bucket instead. Okay, since we know that's going to come loose, the next step is going to be let's break these two bolts. So this is a half inch ratchet. Okay. Okay. Good, so these are both broken. So now that all the bolts are broken, I'm going to continue unscrewing this brake line. And it's going to start leaking more and more. Make sure there's enough brake fluid in your reservoir so you don't run dry because then you'll have to bleed the whole brake system instead of just one side at a time. So just remove any dirt and contamination around here just so you don't get it onto the threads of your brake line. Almost done unscrewing this. Okay, it's starting to come loose. Now we're gonna finish unscrewing our two main bolts here. That's one. That's two. So now you'll be able to pop that out. So now your brake line is gonna keep pouring out fluid and so now you can see the brake line there pouring out fluid 
Make sure you have a bucket underneath. I do. It's all good. Here's your old brake cylinder. That's the bleeder valve. That's where your brake line goes in. I'm going to wash my hands a little bit. Get the new one on before too much fluid pours out. The good thing is a lot of your really hot brake fluid is at the end over here near the brakes. And that's the stuff that is the worst. It's the most acidic. So letting it drain out a little bit is actually a good thing. You're kind of doing like a semi-flush. So that's what's going to be happening right now. But make sure you have enough brake fluid in the reservoir. Here's my reservoir. You can see there's the max. My brake fluid is just below. I've been letting it bleed out slowly. Um, I'm just changing out some of the fluid. It's all the original brake fluid. So keep this on because you don't want contaminants in it. But you can see that the top has the new fluid. It's kind of clear. This is dot three. Make sure you check your manufacturer's specs to see what kind of brake fluid you need. So now I'm going to go put in the nice new wheel cylinder. I'm going to try out this sideways view, see how it works. So take off your little stopper at the bottom that protects it from any contaminants that might go in. Make sure you don't get it dirty. Slide it in the hole. It'll come out the back end and then you just push your brake line right into it. So you can see the brake line going right in. That'll fit right in there. Just like that. And then you bring this nut here and screw it in. So now with our brake line in there, we want to tighten it up. But you don't want to cross thread. So that's going in nice and smoothly. You could probably actually do it with your finger to start. Look at that. That's going in real smooth. That's good. And then once it gets tight, you know you're not cross-threaded. You could start tightening it down. Okay, once it gets snug, let's put in our two bolts that we have. So one goes here. Just hand tighten it for now. Just get it in. Good. And the other one goes on the other side. Good, hand tighten that. And then tighten them down. Tighten them to your manufacturer's torque specs. In this case, I don't know them. So I'm just going to tighten them down so that they're snug. And then a half a turn. So snug up each side before you tighten them down all the way. And if you snug up each side, that means it'll go on straighter. That's snug, and then a little bit of a turn. That's snug, and a little bit of a turn. Good. Now let's finish tightening down our brake line. And this you want to tighten to manufacturer's spec, torque specs as well, which I don't know, so I'm just going to tighten it. So when it's snug, I'll tighten it down just a little bit more. You don't want this leaking, so you're going to inspect for leaks afterwards. So that's pretty tight. And then I'm going to just turn it some more. Good. Now it's starting to turn the brake line, so that means it should be pretty tight. I'm going to take a paper towel. Just clean up the area. Now we're going to go bleed the brakes. So our new wheel cylinder is in. It looks really nice. Now we're going to go bleed the brakes, so we'll take off this cap. So I put everything back together to bleed the brakes. It makes putting this back on easier because these aren't, uh, these are still compressed. When you bleed the brakes, it's want to push outwards. So it makes putting the brakes and everything on easier. Um, so that's all on. I'm going to put the rotor on. And again, you want to see how to do all that. Watch my other video. With the drum on, we're going to go back here. I put a, a bag here. There's your bleeder screw. So all these are tightened. Now I want to loosen the bleeder screw, but the first thing you're going to do is get somebody to go inside and start the engine. Go ahead, start the engine. So that'll make pumping the brakes easier. So now you're going to communicate with the driver and tell them to press on the brake and hold the brake. You don't want them to let go of the brake because then it'll suck air in. So. They're going to press on the brake, and then you're going to loosen this valve as they're pressing. So 
you're going to tell them to press down very slowly. As they press, you loosen the valve, and when they hit the bottom, you tighten it. Okay, I'm going to loosen it. Go ahead, press! Now you tighten it, let go! Loosen it, press! Let go! Press! Let go! Okay, so that was multiple times you let the brake fluid bleed out. So as they press, you're loosening it and then tightening it really quickly when the fluid comes out. And then they let go when it's tight. So that's just forcing the air out. So that's the process of bleeding the brakes. And once you'll know you're done because your, your brakes will be nice and hard. And then you just tighten this down completely, make sure it doesn't get loose. You put the cap back on and you're done. And you did a, uh, a wheel cylinder brake job. After you're done bleeding brakes, just clean up so that you could see if there's any leaks when you use the car. And you want to inspect this after you use the car. Maybe even press on the brakes a few times just to make sure there's no leaks. All these should be nice and tight. And the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to top this off. You can see that it's relatively low and just want to get it to that max line and make sure you use your correct brake fluid. This is dot three. Just check your owner's manual and you're done. So if you watch the the video that I have a link to in the description, the how to change the drum and, and shoes, plus this video on how to change the wheel cylinder, you just did a whole brake rebuild. So now your rear brakes are going to be good for years to come. Like the video if it helps, comment if you have any cool tips, and subscribe if you want to see some more how-to videos. I'll probably be doing the uh, how to change rear differential fluid soon, and just many more to come. Thanks guys. Shoes off, replace the shoes, take all the springs off, take the uh... <sighs> Well that's good. It's going to be just an epic day, isn't it? And also get this drum off if you have a trouble, if you're having cut action. Um, so I'm going to just start with just looking at the cut action. So let's get started. So how this works is cut action. If you want to see how to get to this point, it's like pretty much just taking off all the brake pads and everything. Um, cut action and it's going to be functional functional it's cut action bleed oil out of you take off these boots and there'll be oil you can see the the oil it's leaking here and there'll be so cut action so these are going to have to be replaced or this so this is going to have to be replaced. Sheesh, I'm going to have a million edits. Okay, and that's the process of bleeding, bleeding the blade. So that's the process of breed. Oh my god. You just did a whole brake uh, renovation. A whole brake. 